if you can't play it slow correctly, you're certainly not going to be able to play it fast correctly. Hello, my name is Matt Willis, and in this video series, we'll be discussing tips and strategies to make you a stronger and more confident piper. So today, we're going to talk about structuring your practice for success. One of the biggest problems people have when they do make the time to practice is they don't go into their practice with a plan. Practice needs to be more than just a mini concert you give yourself. Your practice when properly set up should be about 25% warm up, about 50% time working on your primary work set or sets, and the last 25 is your reward for having gone through the warm up and all that work. That's where you finally get to just play music for the pure enjoyment of the music. This should be fun. The whole process, well, it should at least be rewarding if not fun. So the end part is where you get to really enjoy uh, all the hard work you've put in. I've come up with basic templates for how to successfully practice and get the most out of it for 30 minute, 45 minute, and 60 minute practice sessions. Go into your practice with a plan and something you want to get accomplished. So that's step number one, is come up with a primary set you wanna focus on for that week. Also come up with several secondary sets and they don't have to be sets, it could be an individual tune. That's not really what matters. What matters is that you're focusing on something. Okay, you have your tunes selected, your primary work set and several other work sets. Now, I would actually recommend going through these on the practice channer. It's one of the few times in this series we're gonna talk about actually breaking out your practice channer and giving it a whirl. But it's important here, I feel, to go through it on your practice channer to find the spots that give you little hiccups, that give you little problems. I want you to circle those, highlight those, somehow mark those as you're playing through it on the chanter. And it's much easier on the practice chanter to do that stop, circle, and move on. Once you have a dozen or so of these areas circled, this is going to be the basis of a warm up that we will use during this week to perfect the problem little hiccup spots in that set so that you can move it forward successfully. One thing I have seen from most pipers is a lack of proper warm up before you start working on your material. Uh, from my other woodwinds that I've played, uh, clarinet, flute, saxophone, with all of those, there were specific warm up drills that I was assigned and long tone exercises to build my tone, embouchure, endurance, all of those things. Pipers tend to just start on their work set or just playing tunes without a lot of focus on the fundamentals that we need to make music on our instrument. What I want to talk about next is gear. There is going to need to be some gear to have a truly successful practice. And one of the things you're going to need to be able to do is have a metronome in your ears while you're on the pipes. That's very difficult to do for most people. Now, for me, I often use my Tama Rhythm Watch right here, which is nice, on my Fishman Loud Box. This thing is rather pricey, but it's super loud. You can hear this over an entire pipe band, and we use it for that. Um, but a lot of people, you can't take this readily to a park. It's not battery powered. So what else could you do? Well, almost everyone has a smartphone, and on smartphones, there are a ton of great metronome apps that you can download, some of them for free, some of them for very little, but you're gonna need to be able to get them to your ears. If you have an older phone, perhaps, or maybe there's still some phones on the market with a eighth inch plug, I recommend the Shure ES215 in-ear monitors. These are about $100 on Amazon, and they're like earplugs with headphones. I use these on stage with Rathmore. They do a great job of canceling the sound. They go on, they round your ears, in your ears, make a great seal, and I can adjust the volume exactly where I need to so I can hear the click right in my ears when I'm playing. Well, I am on a modern iPhone, so that's not going to work, but Shure also makes another model of the exact same ES215 headphones. As you can see here, same ones, but they're Bluetooth. They got the whole little Bluetooth 
right there. It pairs up easily, works great. This runs about $150. There might be less expensive options on the market. And if you know of any, feel free to comment below with uh, your preferred earphone. So if I'm using my loud box there, I'll just put, I just got these at Lowe's or Home Depot. You know, they were three bucks for two pairs or something. They, they work great when I'm using that. I also recommend a music stand and a pencil and sheet music for all of your primary material. The best musicians in the world practice with a metronome and they do so regularly. We only have two tools on the bagpipe to make music. We can change the pitch and we can change the rhythm, which is the amount of time a note is held against a given tempo. The problem is if you're not practicing with a metronome, how do you know that you're staying steady and on the beat when you can't hear the beat? Don't just trust your foot. So on screen, you'll see a little bit of my basic 10 minute warm up. You see it's just basic grace notes on quarter notes. The goal of this is not to make it complicated, it's to perfect the basic components in which we use to make music. So when playing through the warm-up, I have it set for the metronome to be at 83 beats per minute. I found that, that is a good speed for at least the intermediate and advanced player. If you find that you're not landing the specific race notes or note changes smartly on the click of your metronome, then you can adjust your metronome to be slower. I don't recommend adjusting it to be faster. I don't see any need to be practicing these grace notes at 90 or 100 or more. It's not the goal of this particular warm-up. So 83 is a fine top speed. So what are long tones and why do we need to work on them? Long tones on the pipes are a perfect chance for us to really get to hear our instrument and all of the nuance that each note has. Every note on the channel speaks slightly differently. It's one of the things that makes the bagpipe so wonderful. And you get to hear the balance between the channer and the drones. And this is a perfect time. If you need to do some tuning of anything, go ahead and do some of that during this long tone uh, session. But when you're going, I want you to hold each one of these notes for at least 20 seconds. That's a long time. Have a clock somewhere where you're practicing or a watch or something where you can keep track of the time because 20 seconds is longer than you might think. When you go to change notes, so let's say we're starting on E and going to high A, I want you to make the transition to high A when you are blowing into the instrument in a long blowing phase. Typically what people do is they blow and then they squeeze down the bag and inhale and they change notes on these long exercises and then they start blowing. So like E, A with a fresh breath, that makes it really easy to reset the pressure for every note and we don't want that we want flat line of pressure during the whole time we're playing what you might find after the long tone session is your arm might hurt more or your face might hurt more than when you're playing tunes or doing any sort of other warm-up exercises if you find that to be the case it's entirely possible that there's some weakness in your blowing or squeezing technique when you're playing melodies because your blowing shouldn't change whether you're holding a note or playing a tune. The amount of air going through the pipes is going to be the same if you're blowing steadily. Now I want you to spend the next three to five minutes going through all of those circled areas on your primary work set. For our example here, I've actually taken Scotland the Brave, Rowentry and Wings, and made some example exercises that I would use with a student if that was their primary work set for the week. There is a link again to the PDF warm up for this of all three tunes as well as the warm up I would use before this as a work set. So you can go ahead and check that out. And you can see I've broken down the Taralua into its base components. I've hit the C doubling from all of the different notes in and around the C doubling, how it occurs in the tune. But as you continue to go through, you'll see all of the little bits have something to do with a component of that work set. 
So some of it's from Scott the Brave, some of it's from Rowan Tree, some of it's from Wings, but it's all in there. And it means you're going to hopefully be more successful here in a moment when you get to do the actual work because you've already been working through some of the more tricky transitions. Now's the time to get the pipes in tune, but try to do it quickly. I don't want you spending more than five minutes during this hour session tuning your pipes. So for your work set, this is gonna be the middle 30 minutes of your 60 minute practice. I want you to set the metronome slower than you would play the work set. If your work set is made of variable tempos, like an MSR or a medley, that's just fine. I would play each tune separately at a reduced speed with the metronome and then stop that tune, reset the metronome to the speed for the next tune and play that tune then, but play each tune with the metronome. You'll have a chance later to play the whole thing without a metronome. But if you're playing a march set or any number of other types of, of tune sets where the tempo doesn't change, I would set the metronome lower, do the whole thing at a slow speed, and really pay attention. Make mental notes as you're playing through it of your problem spots. Were they the ones from your warm-up? Were they new ones? It doesn't really matter. Now your job, though, after playing all of those, is to go back and fix those problem spots. So after you do that, and you feel you've hit all of the spots that were tricky for you, now is the time to try that tune set again slowly. If you can use a metronome, if it's a one speed set, do that at the same speed you played it at first. If it's an MSR or medley, go ahead and play the whole set without a metronome, doing your best to just keep your tempos controlled, lower than normal, so that you can hear everything you need to. If you can't play it slow, correctly, you're certainly not going to be able to play it fast correctly. There's an old saying, if you can't play it slow, you can't play it at all. After you've played through that set again slowly, now it's time to up the speed to where you're comfortable. That could be full speed. If it's a set you're already familiar with, it might still be a less than full tempo version, and that's fine. This is not where I want to struggle to meet a new tempo. This is where I want to up the tempo from where we were, but still try to get everything right. And here is one of the big takeaways that can really speed up your learning. Record this set. Record this set. Everyone has a smartphone these days, especially if you're watching a YouTube video. If you have a smartphone, record that set. You can use the voice recorder. It doesn't have to be a video. It can just be the audio. If you have a way of setting up your phone so that you could take a video, that's even more useful because you can see your technique, you can see if your shoulders are staying level, if your cheeks are puffing out. There's a lot of things that you can learn if you can watch it. But it's fine if you can't watch it. If it's just something to listen to, that's going to be plenty valuable as well. And then on these longer practices, I would take the time right now to listen back right then and have your sheet music ready and start circling any areas that you hear that are not going well or are not up to the level you would like them to be. There is nothing as good as hearing yourself to spot errors that you might not have otherwise found. This is a great way to help you become your own teacher and to move yourself forward. After listening to the recording, it's time to work on those problem areas. They might have been the ones from earlier, they might be new ones, but work on them again, make sure they're right. Once I've hit all those problem areas, it's up to you whether you want to try to play the whole set again or move on. I personally like to move on. I've been playing this set now for probably the better part of 25 minutes, and I kind of like stopping with perfected areas rather than putting them back into the tune. Do what works for you in your world, for me, I like to move on and use the last five minutes of this half hour to play one or two of my other primary work sets, ones that I'm gonna be working on other days of the week. Now to the last 15 minutes where you finally get to play the music you might wanna play all of the time. This, is, this should be fun. This should be where you enjoy making music and your pipe should be singing. If you need to take a minute to get them back in tune, that's fine. Tune kind of as you need through this whole process. There's no point in playing an out-of-tune bagpipe, but don't belabor it. Perfect is the enemy of good. Get them good and move on 
during these practices. If you need to have a specific tuning practice session, then set up a tuning practice session. This is a session to really get a, a tune or a set perfected. In this last 15 minutes, it's time to have fun, but keep using your metronome if at all possible. Strong, steady piping is what we're after. If you don't have 60 minutes of time to practice, that's fine. I have templates for 45 minute and 30 minute practice sessions. They're similar, but your warm up time is going to be reduced. You have less time on the whole instrument. You're going to have less time on some of the work set stuff, but you're also going to have less time at the end to have fun. So they're similar. They're there for you to review. I don't feel I need to go over them here in the video. You can see how it works. What I will say though is for the 30 and 45 minute sets, I don't recommend listening back to the recording at that time. Those sets are short enough and your time valuable enough that I think you should really focus on keeping your pipes going as much as possible during that practice session. There will be a link to me actually doing a full 60 minute practice so you can see the process if you're masochistic enough to want to watch me practice for 60 minutes. There will be a video to that assuming YouTube lets me upload a 60 minute video. I also recommend that you make a list of all the tunes in your current working repertoire. And on mine, I have, you know, my Rathmore category, I have my pipe band category, and I have my own personal tunes that I'm working on right now. Now, this is certainly not an exhaustive list of every tune I know, but of the ones I'm currently working on and want to get better. The repertoire day. If you find yourself having five, six, or seven days a week to practice, well, Good job, that's gonna really help you make the kind of progress on the pipes that I know you're looking for if you're watching a series like this. But you're not gonna want every day to be a hardworking day where you focus on a given set more than another. You're going to have to have some days where you try to play through as much of the material you have in your working repertoire as possible. And that's where that list I made came in and you should make a similar list for yourself. As you play through all of the tunes on this repertoire day, make sure you have a pencil ready and start tally marking your tune sets. This will help make sure that you don't favor one set more than another or find yourself not playing something. No sets left behind. Um, unless you don't want to play it anymore. There, there could be a time where you're done with a set, move it out, don't play it anymore. Replace it with something else. But if it's a set or a tune that you know you like to play, then you're going to need to make sure you're playing it and playing it regularly on the pipes. So tally marking after each one of the steps I'm about to discuss is important to keep track of where you're at. So on the repertoire day, I do an easy five minute warm up, which is about two and a half minutes of finger drills and then about three ish minutes of long tones. Just every practice session should have long tones, every, every one of them. After the warm-up, I would move on to a tune or a set that you know really, really well that you're very confident on, but I would still play it slowly. I would start it at probably 75% of full speed and then play through it, then up the metronome to full speed, play through it again. After that, your pipe should be basically going. You should have been playing for 10-ish or so minutes. Should be pretty stable. Might still be moving a little bit, but it should be pretty stable. Spend a minute or two getting it in tune. Then move on to, I would say about two more tunes or sets that you know well and get them on the pipes. Play them at 75, 80% of speed, play it again at full speed, move on to the next set. After that, I would move on to the work set, the primary one you've been doing at your other practices during the week. Play it again at 75% of full speed and then again at full speed. And then after that, I would move on to the other work sets you have. Set two, moderate speed, full speed. Set three, moderate speed, full speed. If you have a set four, a great time for set four, moderate speed, full speed. And then after that, continue working through the tunes in your repertoire. But like the other practices, I would spend the last portion playing what you want, enjoying your time. Still mark them off on the sheet. You're welcome to be marking off any tunes from the sheet through all of the practices you have that week. It doesn't just have to be on repertoire day if you really want to keep track of what you're playing and what you're not. What a lot of people find on repertoire day is practices tend to go long, but they tend to be more enjoyable. You're playing more stuff. Your brain is more engaged often because you have more to think about. On the work days, you can get really tired mentally 
It's taxing to really focus all of that energy on a given tune or set. At the beginning, I said, pick a few sets. I'm going to put up a rotation on the screen here and show you a few different ways we can structure the, the sets that we're learning, whether it's three days a week, four days, five days, six, or even seven. And you can see, let's look at the six day a week one. We have, we're going to focus on tune set number one. That'll be our primary work set that day. On day two, we're going to move on to tune set number two as the primary work set that we're spending the bulk of time on. Day three, we're going to go back to set one. Day four, we're going to go to set three. So a new set yet again. Day five, back to set one. And then on day six, I'd recommend it being a repertoire work day. If you structure your practices using some of the tips here, and it doesn't have to be exactly like this. This is one approach. I do recommend a warm up. I do recommend long tones. I do recommend working on less material, more in depth than lots of material all the time. Again, it's not about giving yourself a mini concert every time you pick up the pipes. It's about accomplishing specific goals that you want to improve on your instrument. Well, there you go. If you found this video helpful, please uh, give it a like and subscribe to my page. I'm going to be releasing content as often as I can, hopefully one video a week for at least the next few weeks as I continue this Command Your Bagpipe series. If you found this very useful, you can even head over to my Patreon and become a patron. All the proceeds go directly to me and it helps me continue making videos like this um, for all of you. So I hope you have a great day. Get out, practice, structure your practice so that you can be a successful piper.